Um, so let's go back to the community. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you, you have to know Taipei Hacker Space. Uh, they find the place in Taipei, and uh, many community, uh, many uh, members go to their place for fun or doing many interesting design. Uh, so let's welcome uh, Greg for the sharing. Hi everyone, can everybody hear me well? Everybody? Okay, cool, thanks very much. How many of you heard of hackerspaces before? Hands up in the air, who heard about hackerspaces? That's, that's quite a few. Who have been to a hackerspace before? Okay, that's much fewer. We want to change this, we want to change all of this. So, my name is Greg, a, or more complicated, Greg in the Hungarian form. I'm a physicist, a hacker, uh, co-founder of Titan Hackerspace together with a bunch of other people and a few other uh, geek related projects like Geek Dinner or Open Hack for programming and, and I'm really grateful for Owen for the invitation for, uh, to be able to present it here and, and I really hope that we can kickstart uh, a movement uh, with all of this and I'm really really happy to be able to share it with you guys. So, a little bit about the hackerspaces for those you know, who don't know about it. It's, um, we live in a very individualistic society, uh, which means that you don't really have to fit in with, with everything. You don't have to fit in with everybody uh, else's you know, values. So uh, there are a lot of people in the, uh, who want to make something, who want to reshare the knowledge uh, that they make, they want to reuse the things they do, uh, they want to reuse the materials they have, uh, so uh, and they want to make something new from what existed before. It's and maybe it's just for knowledge, maybe just for challenging themselves to do something different, and uh, maybe it's experimenting with something new. Maybe something that is not quite legal. It's not illegal, but really, it's definitely not immoral. It's just like testing different ideas and figuring out new things in the world, and. To me, it really feels like that this is the right time for all of this. We are living in an interconnected world. Everybody knows this picture from Facebook that they made of how people's friendships move across continents and across countries. And this is really the right time for that. Like, we have the internet. You can share all the knowledge there. Whatever knowledge you want, you can just go and find it in seconds. There's globalization involved. All of, all of the things that, for example, are said, the 17 different distribution centers around the world, everywhere you can get the materials you want. It wasn't like this before. It wasn't like ever before uh, in the world. There are some other changes happening as well, like uh, the disposable culture that was so far that when you buy something, it's going to be obsolete very soon, and then you just throw away and you buy a new one. People start to reject that. It shouldn't be that way. It's like, just because I have a cell phone and buy a new one, I don't have to throw away the old one. I can make a robot controlled by the cell phone. Or I can take off the screen and use it for something else. So many people who reject the disposable culture, now they find an outlet for this. Also, there's a bad economy that people are seeing, and in bad economy, there are always opportunities. And here, for example, one opportunity is that if you don't have a job, come and make something. You learn in the process, you may be making something else, a new career for you, based on your, uh, on your passion. And we see that already happening in a hacker space. We have members who are fi finding new careers and new passions for themselves. And, and also startups are more and more important. Like small teams who are figuring out new ways of creating companies, new ways of creating products, new ways of creating value in general. And hackerspaces fit right into this culture or created by this interconnected world. So what are the values associated with hackerspaces? One of the first ones that comes to my mind is don't accept crappy stuff. If something is bad, go and fix it. Something you don't like, go and change it. If, you're, uh, if your light is burnt out in your apartment, you don't have to wait for somebody else to make it, uh, to, to make it good again. Just, just do it. There's, n there's no app existing 
for what you want. Just go and create it. So don't accept crappy. The next one is that people should keep fixing stuff. The, if something goes wrong, you don't have to throw away. You don't necessarily have to give it to someone else to fix it. You can go and figure out and fix it yourself. And this is one reason why hacker spaces also have a different variations of the same topic of maker spaces creating new things and fixer spaces, which are focusing on existing stuff, making them usable again. And, uh, and I'm personally having a lot of fun taking old stuff, old routers, old uh, uh, instant cameras, and making them workable again. It's an extremely lot of fun. And when I share it uh, with my friends, they are saying, oh, I can do that. This is awesome. How can I go and fix my own headphones? And, uh, and people love that. There's collaborative creation is the center of all, uh, all things, that, that you come together and create like that. And also connected to that one, celebrate the weird. If something is unusual, it is really cool. You don't have to make something that, for example, is useful. It can be just fun or pretty or, or interesting for somebody. If somebody else doesn't like it, it's their problem, not yours. And what ties into this is that don't mock. Just because you don't like it, there must be a lot of other people who do. So this is the culture that is, that is building in that one. Collaborate, create for whatever motivation you have and celebrate that creation with the people all together. There's value beyond money. People come to the hackerspace sometimes and they ask that, so why do people come here? Do they want to start their own companies? No, they sometimes just want to make something. Sometimes they just want to explore something and there are some people who want to create something for money as well. That's perfectly fine. It's everybody for their own motivation. And with this collaborative creation, do stuff and share it with the world so that people, people can see it and they can get motivation from, uh, from it. Don't underestimate how much motivation you can give to other people by your making an action. So it, it is beyond the hacker spaces. Do stuff and share it with people what you've done. So all in the center of this is the DIY economy. Do it yourself. But what is the it? It can be absolutely anything. You can make clothes, you can make food, you can make farming, you can make electronics, you can make software, you can make a movie, you can make photography. I can go on all day. The whole world is the it in DIY. Do whatever is your question mark and fill that one in. So the whole movement kind of traces itself back to this club, the Tech Model Railroad Club of the MIT. They were uh, a group of people from the 1950s, so almost, uh, more than 60 years uh, now, who started to build railroad, uh, model railroads. And they, uh, their aim was to create more and more complex setups, more interesting tracks, more models recreating and creating new things that didn't exist. And they wanted to make better and bigger and more interesting things. And one of, the word, one of their words was for an interesting creation is, is a hack. And the people who did that were the hackers. So people who made an interesting track, they hacked something. And that's where it started. And if you look at the picture, which was not, in the, uh, not taken in the 50s, it's, it's recent one, they have a large audience. They reach out for everywhere else, not just MIT people, not just engineers, not just their own members, but everywhere. There's an interest in what you make in everywhere in the society. So this was in the 1950s. And when people trace back the origin of the word hack, it, uh, people traced it back, you know, or people described it, uh, hacking is something like when you make a project uh, or create a product, then beyond that you accomplish that, you take an immense interest and pleasure just in taking part in it. That's hacking. 
when you do something and you really enjoy making it and you really enjoy being part of it, then you can already be a hacker and it's already uh, it can be destroyed hacking. Yeah. The, one of the next step in the evolution of the culture was the uh, two, uh, 2060 uh, Hacker Quarterly uh, magazine. The 2060 gets its name from a 1960s technique, a fraking technique, which is uh, people figured out how can they trick in the US, how can they trick the telephone network into letting them make free phone calls. And uh, it was enabled by a 2060 hertz uh, sound, and people figured it out that this toy whistle that you can get from breakfast cereal boxes, which they had presents in them, can make that whistle. So you take the whistle, whistle at the uh, at the phone, and they give you unlimited free long long distance calls. And this is a, this one was that kind of experimenting on the limit of le uh, legal. Uh, boundaries that is uh, that is part of the hacker movement, pushing the boundaries of all of it. And uh, for this 2060 number, they uh, commemorating that one. Later, they started. Uh, later, people started this hacker quarterly where where they were putting in hardware projects, other uh, software projects, sharing with the community where there was no internet, so that they had to have some kind of reach their audience, and this one was one of the, uh, one of the first uh, way of that one. Every new season, they had, they had a new issue, and that's how they spread the knowledge. Meantime, in the meantime, in Europe, uh, there's a group called uh, Chaos Communica Computer Club, which was started in the 1980s, and it was a quite anarchical group enabling, like, uh, to to try to encompass everybody out there uh, without uh, without any discrimination for their gender, their sex, their their planet of birth, even, uh, and they wanted to push technology as well, part of their project, uh, their their mission. And for example, they are famous for 1984, the first electronic bank robbery. And one day. They broke into this electronic bank, stole a, a lot of money, and the next day they give it back because they just wanted to demonstrate that you shouldn't be so careless. Uh, that bank shouldn't be so careless uh, doing their network because other people can exploit that too. So and, and they they did a lot of computer-related uh, exploits, and they were really famous in Germany. And there, people really get this idea of, of being part of a, uh, a movement and in a way that you don't have to conform to the limitations of the society uh, necessarily. And one of the things they started later on, the Chaos Communication Camp, every, uh, every year or two years, uh, they went to different parts of uh, uh, Germany and they, they come together, they gathered all the hackers to, uh, together. They didn't call them hackers at that place, but they gathered the members who share the same values, and they worked on interesting things. Where they worked on interesting uh, ideas, tools, and, and tried to pushing push the boundaries. And it went on for uh, quite a while. The the group itself, in uh, in uh, originally they had five members in 1981. In 2010, they had more than 4,000 members in the in the KS, uh, Computer Club. Now. Uh, the way it moved forward uh, is that since we are in Germany with this one, in the US there were a couple of similar groups doing things, but they are mostly just like little clubs for members only. They got together and learn new stuff together. But it wasn't really open for everybody else. Now in 2006, uh, uh, some people got on a plane and went to Germany to check out this camp of that year. And during that camp, they got to visit some of these maker places, maker spaces in Germany, uh, where they had a lot of tools, people can go in there, make stuff, uh, experiment with things. And they were really, really intrigued. All the people coming over from the US, they were really intrigued. And when they went back, 
they decided that we want to do the same thing in the US as well. And that's how it started to spread one by one. And by those people who graduated from this camp going back to the US, to spread it out one city by city and inspire the rest of the people. One of the people on the, those hackers on the plane was Mitch Altman, who found the noise bridge. Um, he's, he's also a scientist uh, and left academia. And then he, he's famous for making a kit called TV Be Gone. It's a little electronics board, open source, that you can buy and assemble yourself. And it has all the TV codes in it that you can just go on a public TV if it bothers you in the bar that somebody's watching a, a football instead of talking to each other. You use the kit secretly and you can turn off the TV if you want to. So to make the public space less noisy, for example. That's, and uh, he founded his place in San Francisco called the Noise Bridge. And in the Taipei hackerspace, we take a lot of our values from the values they created. And the number one value they have is that do excellent things. This is the number one rule. Like, if you uh, want to ask around that, oh, should I do this or can I do this? The answer is do excellent things. If you, don't, you are not sure that uh, what you are doing is excellent, then ask somebody what's their opinion. But most of the time, if you're not sure, then maybe it's not. But if it's, uh, if it's excellent, then you go ahead and do it. You want to play in the wall? Go ahead and do it. If you want to uh, make a computer-controlled barbecue uh, right on the roof, sure, go ahead and do it, because it's excellent. If you want to, to tear down the building, maybe you should hold back on that. And, and they make their community really collaborative. They, dis uh, they make decisions uh, all together. They, they make decisions that control the space uh, uh, in a in really openly and, and collaboratively. And they really welcome everyone. They, you don't have to be a member to go there and use their tools. You don't. You can just show up and take part in it and uh, and enjoy the benefits of it and to learn from the very knowledgeable people. And they, they are our uh, closest to role models. And we were really fortunate that uh, that in our February opening event we could talk to Mitch over the internet, and he shared a lot of ideas with us. And we could we could go and virtually visit their office th through their camera or workshop through their camera. So these hacker spaces are places for everybody. Uh, so you can also use it to bootstrap an idea that you have for something that should conquer the world. If you have world domination plans, you can use a hackerspace for that one as well. Uh, the replicator, MakerBot replicator, that started in the NYC resistor hackerspace uh, not so long ago, and they, they are wildly successful. The 3D printing economy is, uh, is taking uh, really off, and they, make, uh, they create something great, and they started from a hackerspace. You can use the space to start your, your own uh, project from there. And this is, a, this is a graph of a Google search phrases. It not, cannot really see uh, from here. This, this is 2009. It's basically 2000, before 2009, people really didn't, the wide open public didn't really know about hackerspaces. This whole movement is a couple of years old in the mainstream. Last year, when uh, Make Magazine founder uh, Dale Dougherty was here in Taiwan. He was saying that, oh, right now there's no hackerspace in Taiwan, but I predict that uh, one year from now there's going to be even more than one place. There's, uh, there's going to be quite a few places like that. And he was completely correct uh, with that one. This is, uh, this is an extraordinary quote. And as I mentioned, Make Magazine, they are really strong at uh, popularizing the maker movement, this hacker movement of creating stuff and making things for for exploration. Try to new, uh, try to make new things that, that didn't exist and for fun as well. They, and they could reach to to the really popular people who can act like role models for the rest of us, uh, like uh, MythBusters. Like they are really makers and they are really out to to help. The, the whole ecosystem, and they, they are doing a really good job of, 
uh, of of reaching out to people and inspire people to make make new things. So I'm really glad that we have now Chinese make as well because that lowers the uh, the uh, the, uh, the limitations of who can take part in it. So here I'm speaking all English, but many of our members, for example, don't speak any English. So uh, so I'm really glad that that there's this kind of movement works. But it really goes everywhere. In uh, 2005, there were less than 20 hackers place, hacker spaces around the world. In 2010, there were more than 500. Like, do you, does anybody want to make a calculation how many percentage growth is that? It's, it's extraordinary. And it's just growing more and more every day. These are just a very few of them. Now, Asia, in my opinion, in some sense behind the curve. It's a little bit lagging in terms of how much of this maker movement existing here, even if many of the philosophies would fit, uh, fit right in. Many reasons uh, could be there, but uh, fortunately now we are taking off. The problem is Taiwan is even more behind the curve than the rest of Asia. Uh, Shanghai, Singapore, Tokyo, they have hacker spaces, plural hacker spaces, for much longer time than we have, although they have very different profile. The Shanghai is more closed down. Singapore is more uh, is almost exclusively uh, software. Tokyo hackerspace is awesome. It is is really really good to see that they are doing a really good uh, good work and hope to collaborate with with them later. And now we are here in Taiwan as well, uh, fortunately. And Taiwan has a lot of advantages. There's a lot of information about hardware and software and, and electronics. There, there's a lot of electronics companies, uh, there's a lot of education in that one, there are, there are a lot of hobbies. Other countries would kill for a place like Guanghua. It's, it's not, not everywhere that we have these kind of resources. And also, for example, PTT, everybody shares information. And it's really easy to reach, uh, and, and that is unusual. You don't have to make your own board. It already exists. You just have to go there, and you reach the right the people who you should be reaching, the students, the young people. The skill of the people is great. Is uh, they have a lot of a lot of skills that you can, they can use for this. And also, there are a lot of things to fix. There's a lot of things to change. So there's a lot of opportunities to people take uh, take part in. There's a lot of uh, a lot of items, and there are a lot of ideas to fix. So so there's a lot a lot of things to do. And if people want to take part in something they really easily find something to take part in. And if I look at, for example, Maker Fair from this May, last year it was tiny. This year it was really, really huge, and it's just a, a big, big growth, and it's really reaching out for, for everybody. Of course, there are difficulties as well. For example, for a hackerspace to work, or all of these projects to work, you have to show up. You cannot just wait for somebody else to do it. That's most of the time the problem uh, here, in my experience, that people are waiting that, so, when you are doing the next thing, when you are doing something, I can join. Instead of, hey, I have an idea and I want to make it. Whoever wants to come with me. You have to, uh, to be there, you have to, be, you have to show up, you have to show your individual motivation. Also, there are some misconceptions about makers, fixers, uh, hackers. Uh, downstairs in our hacker space, we have a little little store selling uh, uh, car f uh, filters or whatnot. And then it was the Filipino fishing boat crisis. Uh, one of our members was just co coming back with some lunch, and uh, and our downstairs neighbor stopped him that, hey, uh, you guys have a hacker space, right? Uh, yes. So so you know about hacking, right? Uh, maybe. So, could you guys hack the Filipino websites for us? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we are not quite that kind of hackers. But uh, since then, we got into education, and, uh, and uh, they are really, really fun people. And, and uh, uh, the place we are in near Zhongshan Station, we have a lot of, a lot of, lot of companies uh, doing really interesting stuff. And it's all just a matter of. Uh, of education and exposure. The more people know about that the hackers are not the ones that go there and like, ha ha, I changed your website. 
although it can be a part of it if that's your project, uh, if you're competing with each other, for example, each other's websites, uh, but it's mostly about creation. It's, it's all about positive contribution to the world. Uh, so there are a lot of things uh, uh, we can change, and we are changing one 3D printed Taipei 101 uh, at a time. But uh, we are slowly getting there, and there are more and more places in uh, Taipei and around Taiwan as well that you can join. We are not the only ones. We don't want to pretend we are the only ones. We want more and more people to be there. And even you can start your own hackerspace. The more the better. Right now there are not enough places. It's not a problem that there are too many. It's just not enough places for, for people to go to. So you, any one of you can go out and create one wherever you are. For example, here in Taipei there's Open Lab, which is mostly uh, for Chinese speakers out, uh, out in uh, uh, in uh, the Treasure Hill Artist Village, and they are doing extremely good work collaborating with artists, for example. This is from one of their exhibitions. They are not all computers. This is the picture I found from them. Uh, they, are they are doing a lot of collaboration with artists, and they are doing a great work. I'm always surprised from what they are doing. They, they are awesome. And there's also FabLab. Fab uh, there's more than, more than one FabLab now in Taipei. They have a lot of tools that you can go there and make your own project. Uh, make your make your uh, own items, uh, whatever you decide, and and they are doing a great work of of enabling people to do their things. And of course, there are other places. Uh, Taizong has their own group, uh, and and there's need more. Uh, there's a need for different places. Uh, Tainan, Kaohsiung, uh, Hualien, uh, uh, Xinju, wherever you name it, you should start something or check whether there's somebody who's just trying to make it work, but they don't know. Just join them and make it work with them. So we are type a hackerspace. We are over at this address that is printed in your, uh, in your booklets as well. And we are really welcome for everybody to, uh, to join us. Whenever we have a key holder member there, you can just come and do whatever you like. Uh, you can give a call on the, uh, the phone, or uh, especially if you uh, join our mailing list, that there, there you can always uh, always ask people questions or collaborate with people or ask that, hey, next Saturday I would like to play around with Arduinos, but I don't uh, I don't have an Arduino. Can I go there and and play with the ones that you have? And we say, sure, for shizzle, yeah, uh, you come and uh, and do the things and and join us. And join our event, or 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 mix. Tell us something that you, that you made. So, uh, our mission is really to be as open community as possible, and and to do this positive contribution to to the Taiwanese maker movement because we really believe that that there's a, there's a lot of potential uh, in Taiwan, and there's a lot of untapped potential. Uh, that uh, we can bring out that make Taiwan uh, a really fun place to be, and and a really really interesting place to be, and uh, we can show it to the whole world how much fun we are. So thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, just uh, maybe we can have a few more uh, questions, and uh, you can find me later as well. Thank you. And to feel excited, inspired, and want to join the hackerspace. How many of you want to join hackerspace? <laughs> yeah, don't be hesitant. Phew, uh, <laughs> and it worked. And you want to hack it into the Philippine government. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> OK, so time for question. If if nobody has a question, the, uh, uh, that's that's totally fine because uh, uh, we have uh, we have our mailing list on Google Groups that you can uh, you can post your question if you have uh, ask for ideas because the space itself is just part of the hacker space. The real value in it is the community. We have more than uh, more than a hundred people uh, right now on the mailing list from all walks of life, uh, life. entrepreneurs. Uh, electronics uh, wizards, 
uh, people who are running their own companies. So, so uh, you can uh, you can reach out for for every kind of different things. You can show your projects and everything. And uh, we have our own, uh, like websites with uh, with uh, with a map for 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 events and things like that. So so we are really open and we like to share like every every kind of um, project we do. We just share and make make some detailed instructions that, that how does it work and I really encourage you to do, to do this and if you don't if you feel shy it's not a problem everybody's shy I, I, I'm really shy <laughs> uh, so you, you should you should come and join one of our events take it easy relax see it and if it's valuable for you then you are the most welcome thank you very much <laughs>